Hello everyone, I'm Greg Nibbler and welcome back to Two Box Live, part of Two Box Media, TWO Box Media. Hit subscribe, follow, share the show, all of that stuff. We're continuing our coverage with CES 2021 and we're going to talk about some innovative technology right now because John Deere has been there for the last three years and winning another innovation award this year. To talk about that, we are joined by the CTO of John Deere. We've got Jamie Hinman. Jamie, hello. Thank you so much for being here with us. Great to be with you. Um, I'm excited to talk to you, A, for John Deere. I'm just going to say right at the front, uh, my grandparents were farmers, hops farmers, so I grew up around John Deere equipment, so I think it's really interesting seeing kind of the innovations and the, and the new iterations that are coming out and utilization of technology in this. And talking about CES in general, I guess maybe to start off, uh, Innovation Awards, two years in a row. Um, can you talk to us a little bit about what was different this year that you brought to the table and, and what people got to see from CES with John Deere? Yeah, sure. This year we won an uh, award for best uh, of innovation uh, for our X9 combine. So the technology that's within that combine and maybe a reminder, the combine is the piece of equipment that goes through the field and harvests all the hard work that the farmer put in during the year. So whether you know, that's corn or soybeans or wheat or whatever it might be, the combine's purpose is, is, uh, is unique in that it has to harvest that material and it has to separate you know, the, the, the useful parts of the plant from the non-useful parts of the plant. Uh, and so the technology that we brought to bear uh, for the X9 Combine is uh, uh, artificial intelligence technique, where we actually taking uh, high-speed image pictures of the crop flowing through the combine. And then we're using image classification techniques in order to optimize the settings of the combine to make sure that we clean the grain as well as we possibly can and don't waste any of it out of the back of the combine. That's a, a, an operation that traditionally the farmer would have to do manually themselves. We've been able to automate that and, and really take that burden off of the operator of the combine with, uh, with cameras and with artificial intelligence. Well, and that seems like it's an incredibly uh, challenging thing to do. When you think about how much processing that takes to have artificial intelligence going through this in real time out in, I'm sure, a myriad of different conditions that are happening in order to make this all work right. So uh, to talk just a little bit about the technology, how does that work? How are you processing all that? I would assume it's got to be on board because cloud computing, I, I would think, would be a little bit hard to do to process some of that info. But can you, can you give us just kind of a general overview of how you're able to do that? Yeah, for that particular technology, we use onboard vision processing capability. We use uh, FPGA devices that are processing those images for us at a high rate of speed. Uh, but but and and then we we analyze those images also on board and make the con real time control decisions actually on the vehicle. But I think interestingly, I don't think we're that far away from. Uh, being able to do those sorts of things through an edge computing type of, of approach. Uh, and, and I think that's really interesting and opens up a lot of possibilities, not just for, for John Deere and agriculture, but for industry at large. Yeah, I mean, really, uh, to be able to do that, I would think that would, that would, like you said, open up a lot of possibilities on there. Um, Something uh, something else I want to talk to you about, you know, being the first CTO of John Deere and also uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but I read this that one of the, the focuses of your doctorate was on essentially artificial neural networks and heavy equipment. Uh, can you talk to us a little bit about how you made some of those connections and and what some of the ideas are that you have for bringing this to John Deere and, and heavy equipment manufacturing? Yeah, sure. You know, I, I worked in the, the technical area of artificial neural networks almost a decade ago. And at that point in time, you know, it was sort of a frustrating uh, field to be in because we didn't really have compute capability. We didn't really have, you know, the connectivity infrastructure necessary to handle extremely large data sets that really make the, the technology uh, come to life and make it incredibly valuable. And so we're, we're living in a, a really a magical time right now uh, in that those uh, other elements of technology have been matured to the point. Uh, where we can start to build in intelligent in, intelligence into equipment like the tractor and the planter that are behind me and bring machines to life, right? They're, they're really having the opportunity for the first time to start thinking uh, as opposed to just executing something. And that uh, has a really long runway ahead of it in agriculture. Uh, it gives the, the opportunity for us to make real-time decisions that previously uh, couldn't have been made because we didn't have access to that data and we didn't have you know, the connectivity and, and, and importantly, the, the compute capability on the machines in order to do that work. Well, and looking at this from a, a big picture as well, just in general, probably a lot of people are, yeah, you know, when John Deere first came to CES, it's like, well, John Deere, this is agriculture. What, what is, you know, how does this tie in? And obviously it does, but for people in general, can you talk, speak to that a little bit about how technology and how these advancements are really important um, just as a society and for farmers and for agriculture? 
Yeah, it's a great it's a great question. You know, everybody has to eat, right? And the world's population is continuing to grow. Uh, but the arable land that we have to work with, the the land that we can plant crops on, is fixed resource. And so, technology for us is really uh, a solution to that problem. It's a solution to creating enough food for the world's population, doing that in a sustainable way. And to do that, we have to fundamentally do more with less. And precision ag is all about how do you reduce the inputs on the, the input side of the growing process and maintain or maximize the output side uh, in order to continue to, to feed uh, a growing world population. Well, going back to what I mentioned at the beginning, just uh, you know, a generation ago, growing up with my grandparents being farmers and talking about farmers right now, what's the interaction been like as far as bringing them along with this newer technology? Are they open to it? Are they open to adapting to this? And, and how's that, I guess, process been? Yeah, it's a great question. You know, we, we work in a fantastic industry in agriculture. Farmers are innovators uh, across the globe. Uh, they they readily adapt to and uh, attract to themselves technology that makes their businesses better, makes their farming operations better. So, you know, the, to the extent that we put technology out there that helps them solve the problems that they face in an increasingly complex, you know, multiple uh, multivariable optimization problem that is the growing season for them, uh, they're attracted to it. And so we've seen tremendous uh, success in the marketplace with farmers, uh, you know, taking on the technology, learning the technology, utilizing it to its fullest potential. And then, you know, it, importantly for us, uh, the last mile connected to the customer for us is actually our dealership networks, right? The John Deere dealers that you're accustomed to seeing around the country. And, and they've really responded with training their uh, staff in order to support customers and really translate the technology in to each individual farming operation because they are all different and their application of technology is different. And I think that's a great point. Yeah. Cause there's so many different variables and factors that go into that and, and just not only, um, crops and how they farm, but also just environmental factors and, you know, the terrain. Uh, one thing uh, I did want to ask, like looking, say, you know, five, 10 years out, you mentioned edge computing and, you know, maybe it's cloud commu computing or getting more connectivity. Uh, when we reach that point, you know, whatever that is, whether it's 5G's everywhere or we all have satellite internet, do you think we could get to a point where we'd have full autonomous farming of fields or is that something that's even possible? It's absolutely possible. In fact, you know, the, the tractor that's behind me uh, is, uh, in effect, a self-driving device today, right? The, the operator of that uh, tractor can actually go out and plant a, a complete field, 40, 60, 80 acres, and never have to touch the steering wheel, never have to interact with the controls on the tractor. The tractor uh, is GPS uh, guided within the field. Uh, it knows where it's supposed to be and, and, and goes to that location with a high degree of accuracy, uh, roughly one inch positional accuracy. Uh, we're controlling and automating the functions on the planter as well. Uh, so it's not just a, a driving problem for us, but it's also a job problem. We have to plant while we drive. Uh, those functions are automated as well. We still have the operator in the tractor uh, in order to, to the, they're the perception system effectively today. Uh, but you can imagine a future not too far away from us uh, where, uh, you know, that perception system is done with, with things like stereo cameras and other input devices, uh, and we're perceiving the environment around us. And that gives us the opportunity to start talking about taking the operator out of the tractor cab. To be fair, many growers like to operate their tractors, so I don't know if they'll want to step <laughs> out of the cab or not, but we're going to give them, you know, the capability to do that if they want to. At least the options there, if they want to take a day That's off. Right. If it's, <laughs> but. Well, it's it's really fascinating what you're doing, and I you know I want to say thank you very much for for joining us too to talk about this and just seeing how your I mean truly real time innovation that's happening in a field that's important to all of us whether people pay attention to it or not they should because it's agriculture it, it affects everybody and um, and I think it's really really cool seeing what you're doing with it for everybody out there too who's watching this and I, I want to kind of direct them to where they can learn more and see more about what you're doing and and get kind of more of a view of what goes on out there for all these farmers? Where should we direct them? Yeah, great question. So the microsite for CES is up and running, www.johndeer.com slash CES 2021. All right, Jamie, thank you very much for joining us. Appreciate it a lot. And congratulations on the award again this year. And hopefully uh, next year, we'll see you in person at CES 2022. I hope so too. <laughs>